Hello, my name is John David Powell, and from the television studios of the Jack J. Valente School of Communication at the University of Houston, this is the discovery section of Graffiti, the electronic newsletter of the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. David Francis is the Hugh Roy and Lily Kranz Cullen Distinguished Professor, Chair of the Department of Psychology, and Director of the Texas Institute for Measurement, Evaluation, and Statistics, or TIMES. This past May, Professor Francis received the Esther Farfel Award, the university's highest honor recognizing faculty excellence. Francis was key in founding the National Research and Development Center for English Language Learners within Times. Funded by a $10 million U.S. Department of Education grant, the project focuses on literacy and English language development of Spanish-speaking elementary and middle school students. He also was among the researchers who founded the Texas Center for Learning Disabilities. The center's development was assisted by an $8.5 million grant from the National Institute of Child Health and Human Development. It also combines efforts from Times and other institutions. Francis arrived at UH as a graduate student in 1979. He earned a Master of Arts and a Doctorate in Clinical Neuropsychology, and in 1985 he was hired as a visiting professor. One year later, he became a permanent member of the UH Psychology faculty, and it is a pleasure to have you with us on Discovery. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure to be here. Busy summer. Busy summer. What have you been doing? Uh, you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I didn't I, want to know at all. A little bit of traveling and a lot of research. Good. So, times. What is times? We hear about times, but... What, what is it? What is it, guy? Yeah. Uh, Times is an interdisciplinary research center on campus. We have faculty primarily from psychology, but also from uh, education and economics that are working with us. Mm -hmm. We do mostly work in the application of statistics and solving problems in education, although uh, and also in uh, developmental psychology. Mm -hmm. We have opportunities to work outside of those areas, but right now most of our funding is in education and uh, developmental disabilities. And this is a part of uh, helping. Uh, non-English speaking, oh. st Spanish speaking uh, students? A, a, big, a yeah. big portion of our current research funding is focused on children who are English language learners and it's at all grade levels, prim mostly in elementary school but more recently in middle school as well. Okay. But uh, and in Texas most English language learners are Hispanic. So what do you do? What do you find then what do you do after you've have you reached your uh, conclusion or, or well your the, research, the yeah. work is actually quite broad so some of it focuses on early language and literacy development where we're looking at how uh, language literacy instruction in the classroom impacts students achievement outcomes some of it is focused more on middle school students in terms of instructional settings and uh, approaches that might be used to try to improve students achievement in social studies and science but it focuses primarily on the language uh, skills, vocabulary development that students need to be successful in achievement. So the studies actually involve a variety of different kinds of interventions where we're looking at different ways to instruct students to see mm -hmm. what the impact is on their, on their student outcomes. And then also looking at things like home environment and school setting and ch child characteristics and how all those things come together to help students be successful. And who's using your research? Uh, the research gets disseminated quite broadly across the country. Uh, we also, uh, one of the things that we have at times is, uh, uh, is the English language learner strand of the Center on Instruction, and that's primarily a dissemination effort where we look at the literature that's been published on English language learners as well as the work that we're doing, and then provide that out uh, through a network of regional centers that the Department of Education funds that goes out actually to schools and states and districts uh, through dissemination efforts. It's not... Um out of the way to say that uh, you are probably the top researcher in terms of federal funding at the University of Houston. We've had a lot of success, but it's not just me, it's a team of people, so I, yeah. I, uh, I'm the, often the principal investigator right. of the grants, but uh, it takes a lot of people. I, I think uh, within times, at one point, we had about 235 people working, uh, about 130 F full-time equivalent people so it's it's yeah. not a, it's a small army it's not just one person well, that's something about 43 45 million dollars in federal funding since uh, 2001 mm -hmm. which uh, may be depending on how, how we look at the numbers uh, a, a tenth if not uh, a greater portion of uh, the university uh, federal funding and research yeah it's it's uh, it's easy to look at those numbers but uh, one of the things you have to take into account is the fact that the kind of work that I do involves a lot of people 
people cost money, and so the costs of the grants are large relative to, say, a scientist who's working in a laboratory that doesn't need a lot of people to carry out the work, but maybe needs a lot of equipment. So money is not the, the, the total objective. We try to look at also what we, what we sure. accomplish with the work. So. Sure. And you've accomplished quite a bit. And you're moving on to, let's see, the complex system supercluster. That's something new. This is a new idea. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Burks, when he came as the vice president for research, wanted to uh, initiate the formation of clusters within the university, which are somewhat more fluid ways of combining people uh, to, f to, uh, to accomplish interdisciplinary research. And I'm in the process of trying to head up a group called the Complex System Supercluster, which involves people in neuropsychology, in neuroscience, computer science, statistics, my area, mm -hmm. uh, as well as uh, pharmacy, to try to pull them together to get them working on more uh, some synergistic work that uh, is in the area of health and, and behavior. and. Uh, some of the more interesting uh, areas of, uh, of medicine right now. So. Explain this, the, the cluster. Uh, this something Don Burks, who's the vice president for research, came in and uh, said, this is something we need to do if we want to be competitive. Yeah, I think the idea is that in general, and this has kind of been part of the Times formula for success, is that we've involved people from a variety of different disciplines in the kind of work that we do. That gives you uh, an added edge, I think, in terms of competitiveness when you go in because many of the problems that we try to solve today involve lots of different disciplines. And so when you can put people together from different disciplines working to solve those problems, you have a, a leg up on the competition. So the idea was to try to do that within the area of neuroscience, neuropsychology, st uh, statistics, computer science. Those people, bring those people together to try to compete for money that we wouldn't be able to compete for if we were just sort of working in our own, on, on our own, in our own laboratories. Okay, so this is uh, just in the, the, the organizing stage, the, the groundwork stage? Yeah, I would say it's still uh, very, we're still in the preliminary stages. We're sort okay. of mapping out uh, where our home is going to be because it's very important to sort of get everybody into a, a common location so that people can have an opportunity to talk with people who are sort of outside their discipline but working on a related problem. That is the way that new ideas get generated. So we've got to find ways to sort of help people uh, collaborate and and uh, get together and interact on a regular basis. So we're actually in the process of mapping out our space and where we'll be and the equipment that we'll need, the core facilities that we need to create. Sure. Core facilities are, are facilities that you construct in a centralized location that other researchers can access, which then allows people to sort of come in and, and benefit from the existence of mm -hmm. uh, those facilities and equipment in a, in a single location. You're also the chairing the Provo Search Committee? I am chairing the Provo Search Committee. One other hat that I'm wearing <laughs> at the moment. Yeah. All right, so don't, just between us, I can't. How's, it go, how's it going? <laughs> it's going quite well, but I can't really say very much about it. So, but, uh, but I'm pleased with the process. Uh, we are on a very fast track to get a new person in here by, by January, and I'm optimistic that we'll be successful. All right, you heard it here. Thank you. David Francis has been our guest this month. I'm John David Powell. Thanks for being with us, and we will see you again next month on Graffiti.